Hey, this is Jenny with the OCN Street team and we're live right now and I'm gonna connect us with a special guest. So uh, just bear with me. Okay. <laughs> Yay. Hey. <laughs> Magic. Can you hear me? I can. Can you hear me? I can. Thank you so much. Okay. So, um, thank you live audience for bearing with me. So, uh, OCN street team, we are live with Biff Gore, the ambassador of soul. Thank you so much for, uh, swinging into our live little chat here. Oh, are you kidding me? I'm honored to be here. It's always a pleasure to have you. And you're going to um, bring us something super special. So in the spirit of um, Black History Month that we are in, you are going to be uh, kind of introducing some amazing, groundbreaking uh, musicians that help shape American music. Is that why we're here today? It is. You know, one of the things that um, we've, w one of the things that have, that is, that's happened in, uh, when you talk about Black History Month, I feel like sometimes the conversation becomes really mundane because we talk about, you know, recently we started talking about people like George Floyd, uh, but but we talk about the same kind of political people. We talk about, you know, uh, med medical people like Ben Carson or other people who, so it becomes a little mundane. And we know that we, we, it's great that we, we have these accomplishments, but what about what about the musicians? You know, there are some. There have been some musicians that have that have uh, made some incredible inroads in music and have been an influence for not just um, black people and African Americans, but for the entire the entirety of music, right? right. So what happens is um, the Library of Congress will will reach out. Uh, it's usually posthumously after the person's passed away. And they say, we have got to ca ca capture these people's music because they made such an impact on the greater society. And they do it with every genre of music from bluegrass to blues to rock to r and B. I I mean, look at the Rock and Roll Hall of F Fame now. I would have never imagined, I'm sitting in my room when I was a kid and I'm listening to LL Cool J and Grandmaster Flash. <laughs> and I never imagined in my life that these guys would be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I mean, you know, I, yeah, cool. I went to high school with Tupac. Tupac. You did? Tupac went to my high school. He was a uh, he what? he was there for one year for one year. Uh he he was at uh when I was a senior, he was a soft, a freshman, and then he transferred over to the Baltimore uh School for the Arts. But yeah, he's a he. He went to he went he did his high school in Baltimore. Wait, and, wait, wait, uh, back up. This is the first <clears> time I've ever heard this. So, did you know him very well? Oh. He was an underclassman. He hung out with his friends. He was a you know when you're a junior when you're a senior and someone's a a freshman, it's like almost two worlds apart. Yeah, you might but, as well be one on Mars and one on Moon on the it, Moon, right? Exactly, but um, he was uh, he 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 was an amazing kid. But what I'm saying is. I would have never imagined that hip hop would be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And uh, so I'm pretty, I mean, it's pretty amazing when you think about um, how, how this music has been so influential. And so how did this music come about? You got guys like James Brown, who was the godfather of soul, probably had the most um, sampled music up until a certain point about, about you know, uh, uh, a music of influence towards hip hop, but who, who, who was the influence for our what we call modern day rock music? Um, and so that's who I want to introduce today. This guy's <laughs> name is Robert Johnson. Okay, can you hold and, that picture up a little bit? There we go. And he's pretty amazing. Okay, tell he us was, tell us a little bit about him here. He was born May eighth, nineteen eleven. In uh, in 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 good old Mississippi, so he knew something about good hot water cornbread, 
and he <laughs> he had an understanding of what delicious catfish and fried chicken was all about. <laughs> but the guy lived, he didn't live very long. He lived, he died in 1938. So he was 20 some years old when he died. Wow. <clears throat> but his influence on music was so profound. As a matter of fact, when you listen to Eric Clapton's music, uh, when you listen to The Who and The Rolling Stones and all these, all these great uh, uh, British bands, even the Beatles, they had his records under their beds. They were listening to this kid's music. Wow. At a time when the blues was dead in the United States, people were like, okay, we got the blues, but uh, we want to move on to other stuff. This guy was so influential um, because he his guitar skills, the way he, the way he, um, um, his, his use of melodic tones in the one, four, five blues scale was so absolutely amazing that 40 years after his death, these kids are trying to discover who this guy is and they're discovering American blues. Hey, hey, hey Faith, how you doing? They're, they're discovering the American blues and they're bringing this music they're bringing this music over to England. So these blues players who people in America had, had completely forgotten about, they these guys had discovered this music and they were like, we want to have this. And they started incorporating this music. And, and let me back up even further than that. Probably the guy who is the godfather of, the, of, of modern uh, rock music is Chuck Berry. And yeah. Chuck Berry, I mean, his riffs, when you listen to his riffs, you can tell that he he was influenced by Robert Johnson, Robert Leroy Johnson, born in Mississippi uh, in, on May 8th. So when they, they inducted him into the, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame um, in, in, the, in the 90s, in 19, and actually in 1986, almost, almost 50 years after he passed away. Um, and then the Library of Congress basically took his music which we, which thankfully we have about mm, twenty of his recordings, and they and they recorded the way they used to record back in the day. They would just put a mic in front of you, you play the play the guitar or and sing all in one take. You just did everything wow. in one take. It was raw and real. Yeah, and he made he had such influence over so many different musicians, so many genres of music. Um, his his genre of music was Mississippi Delta blues, but but um that was the really the foundation of of uh, modern rock music wow and so when when did you discover him personally for yourself so so i grew up in music and and i'll tell my story someday but um i was you know i was learning how to play the guitar and um i would say my greatest influence uh guitar wise has probably been eric clapton um, I mean, Eric is amazing, but I didn't, I didn't really understand what, what it was about him that drew me to him until um, I started listening to him and, 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 and he loved the blues, right? A lot of his early stuff was blues, but when he came out with that unplugged album, that whole album yes. was, was a tribute to Robert Johnson and the way he reinterpreted the, that music. He made it his own, but he paid homage and tribute to what I would consider the greatest blues man to ever live, which is Robert Johnson. Now I know we got the amazing. blues, BB King, and all those guys, but from a uh, just the way he would phrase the music, the way that the way that uh, you could when you listen to this guy's music, is it's like his soul is is haunting you through the music because it's so good, and mm. so. I, I just, um, I fell in love with blues early, 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 early in life. Uh, and then, the, you know, growing up in the, in the inner city and just being exposed to so many different genres of music, I fell in love with, um, I fell in love with the blues, but, but a lot of the music that I listened to growing up was like traditional R&B, traditional rock. My father had crates and crates of music. Mm. But when I found this guy, when I found his music, when I, when I got my own, when they, um, they re-released, they digitally remastered Robert Johnson's recording from 1927, I was blown away. It was, mm -hmm. it was, just, it was like listening to uh, an ancestor long ago just playing these, this, this beautiful guitar and these riffs that were um, 
just again bone chilling. How old? About how old were you when you when you heard that for the first um, time? Unfortunately for me, I was about thirty when I discovered Robert Johnson. Wow. I hadn't heard his music before. I mean, because you I don't think, think about very many people have. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, because for me, most of the most of the blues that I had heard before was really like really commercialized blues, like BB King. Um, Gerald Burnside. I mean, these were great. Uh, don't get me wrong. No, these guys are beasts. Right. You know? uh, but but I hadn't heard that gut, that real guttural blues, you know. Um, and then I tell you, if you if you ever get a chance, one of the greatest documentaries about the blues, Martin Scorsese did. Um, it was called it was basically a seven part series on the blues. Hmm. And they start with Robert Johnson. And well, they Corey Hart is 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 Corey Hart's actually a, a a local guy here in Colorado. Okay. And uh, and he says if you really want to understand the blues, you got to go down to the D Mississippi Delta because that's where all the different genres of blues comes from, right? So you got you got Mississippi Delta blues, Piedmont blues, which is out of North Carolina. You got Texas Jump blues, which is re ridiculously fantastic. Uh, you got Chicago blues, and then you have. Uh, what, what would be more like a contemporary blues that you hear today, which is a morphing of all of these blues. So Sammy Mayfield would be more like contemporary blues today. Where do you fall in? Which category of blues do you kind of uh, uh, associate yourself with? I probably associate myself more with Mississippi Delta blues. Okay, right. Yeah, because um, just the raw nature of of um, how the how the um, the, the the chord structures and the and the way that the songs are are kind of crafted and written um i i really identify more with with mississippi delta blues yeah. and if someone uh now my interest is really peaked and i'm sure your audience is too where would we be able to actually hear these recordings of robert johnson um all his music is on itunes now Really? Okay. Yeah, it's amazing how, I mean, you can go to iTunes or Spotify or any of these other music platforms, but his music is, it's, it's, it's there. Uh, as a matter of fact, he, you and I did a segment um, a couple months ago, and I did one of my, I want to say I did one of my blues songs there for you. You did, you did one of your originals coming, coming, uh, soon to be released on your upcoming album. Yes, yes. And so I love this. Um, his inspiration to me was um, um, uh, very chilling because uh, I, I listen to his music. I listen to the way that he emotes when he sings, and uh, and and I identify with that because I'm a very emotional singer. So I just felt, you know, why why wouldn't we want to put a, uh, a a person who is a a pioneer in the music industry? Um, who had a who had a who who made America better? Mm -hmm. That's what that's why we showcase Black History Month and Women's History Month and uh, Latino History Month and and Asian American uh, Month because we want to we want to pull out the thing, those things that are the best of the best in our genres and our communities that made the greater good of America better. And so he's one of those dudes that. Um, you know, I, I kind of call him the grandfather of the blues. He was that good. Wow. And Robert Johnson, correct? Robert Johnson. Robert Leroy Johnson. Wow. Thank you so much. I'm so excited. So if you guys are just, if you came in kind of mid live stream or whatnot, uh, the OCN uh, Street team, I'm sitting down with Biff Gore, the ambassador of Seoul. Um, <laughs> it's always su such a treat to sit down with you. Um, and we're discussing um, some really influential, maybe some unknowns, uh, yeah. uh, pioneers of uh, music, not just American, but nationwide, the influence that they've had worldwide yeah. um, in honor and celebration of Black History Month. Um, and Biff, before we go, uh, I, I would love for you to tell us what you're working on. And we always yeah. love to get little, uh, you know, quality sound bites from you if you're you're open. I see one of my buddies from The Voice was just on here with me with us, and uh, that's oh, pretty nice. cool. Jake Barker, man, that dude was uh, he was he's got this smooth voice, man. That guy's like he should have been named Silk Sonic. 
he was uh, absolutely amazing. Yeah. Well, and that's where you got your name, Ambassador of Soul. That came yeah, from my, voice, yeah. correct? Yeah, my, Who that, coined that for you? Uh, that would be that would have been Adam Adam Levine. He liked my he liked my soulful grit, and he also liked my dance moves. <laughs> I think everybody likes your soulful grit. The dance moves I've not really seen. I've always seen you sitting down playing. So, <laughs> oh, well, I do I do an occasional high kick. So you you know I save I save those moves for my festival shows and. And some of those, you know, like the big shows that I do, uh, but I try to preserve my energy like a turtle when I'm uh, when I'm out singing. I, I try to focus all my energy on on roaring like a lion. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe the further we we do this, you know, maybe like uh, the the third person you introduce or something, we could get that high kick at the end. Oh, oh yeah, I think that would be that would be great. Um, I I just I. Um, so I do have a, I do have some new music coming out. I've been playing, like I said, I've been writing a, an, an album. It's a little, um, uh, it's a little. I wouldn't say scattered, but it's it's all of the music that's kind of shaped me, um, from the blues to uh, music music of inspiration, really gospel music and 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 cr Christian music. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, those are those are the foundations of of who I am. God made all music, uh, probably uh, including screamo music. But that's probably the only genre that I haven't. Um, Including what? Screamo music. You know, when they go. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> <laughs> is that uh, a technical term? It's a, it's a technical term for, for the genre of rock. Okay. Yeah. Yes. But. Um, well, there's I, always time, Biff. There's always it, time for you to, to, to move into that. It's rough on your voice. I see my boy Kier is on here, too. He's, a, he's another. That guy is a beast. One day he's he's he just I think they got nominated for a Grammy this year and, and wow. for American Music Award. This yeah. kid is this guy is writing so much uh, incredible music and there's so many phenomenal musicians who people never get a chance to hear and that's why I wanted to talk about my this musical pioneer, this guy who has just uh, 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 blazed a trail for so many different mu music genres. Um, <laughs> Somebody just wrote that. Maddie, <laughs> what's up, Maddie? She says she that might be your next. I think that's your next album, Beth. The Screamo album. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I probably wouldn't have a voice after that, but I guess you could. You could train. It might any... be your last. Your, I, your I, last I would. Album. I would. It would be me training my dragon, I guess. <laughs> but um, yeah. Well, I, well, I love how you're engaging um, all of us in this this conversation not only about Black History Month, yes. but about uh, music, how universal it is, the community uh, that you're a part of, how you bring that community together. We'd love to keep connecting with you. We're definitely excited to keep talking with you throughout uh, this month to hear about who the other three musical uh, influencers are that you're going to introduce us with. And uh, we just want to keep talking with you and hearing how things are going. Will, will you will you sing us out or sure do I'll, something special for us? Yeah, I'll do a I'll do a I'll do a, a line from my uh, from from this song. You know, uh, one of the things you had these incredible blues turnarounds. <laughs> Woke up this morning, had some tears in my eyes. Feeling like I lost my stride. I said, Lord, please help me. I'm downcast in my, my soul. All right. <laughs> Well, it's hard to believe that uh, Robert Johnson or anyone could be better, but <laughs> well, Robert Johnson is the—he's the—he—he uh, he really is the king of the blues or the father of the blue of the modern blues, because I, what I failed to mention was when they did that, they went down to the Mississippi Delta and they went—they stood right on the crossroads, and you know what happened? He looked at uh, uh, Martin Scorsese, Corey Hart looked at him, and he said. He said, the blues didn't start here. And they got on an airplane and they went to Africa 
right to Ghana and they met with a griot. And the message that the griot said, you can take the African out of Africa, but you cannot take the music out of the African. Wow. And so, yeah, that was like one of the coolest lines in that whole thing. That's powerful. That's yes. powerful. Westwood, what's happening? Oh man, we got some great people on here tonight. So uh, thank you for bringing everybody together. Hey Biff, where can people find you? Where where can they find your music? We'll definitely have, you know, once we post this, we'll have all of that information too. But uh, tell everybody right now. All my social media is Biff Gore. Um, you can find me on on everything from Spotify to uh, to Apple Music to. Uh, Instagram to YouTube, everything that I do is B I F F G O R E, the ambassador of soul. That's and right, Denny. You are amazing. Thank you so much. You this this platform is great. Denver now, is, you guys are really, really making it happen, and for the community, you guys are really, really um, bringing um, focus from uh, the national stuff is great, but I, but giving people an under, a, a greater understanding of the 5280 is we have a lot of great things going on in this town we really do we have a lot of great people a lot of uh, great people a lot of great stories just it, and it's so exciting yeah that we get to connect with someone like you uh so so thankful thank Aww. you so much biff i appreciate you all right. Well, thanks so much for our audience for joining us and meet us back here again throughout the month. And we'll have even uh, greater music and uh, uh, conversations with Biff, Biff Gore, the ambassador of soul. Thank you. Peace and blessings. Good night. Thank Good night. you.